Hello everyone, welcome. This is going to be a third video of AWS Event Driven Pipeline Series. If you want to know what we have done so far, kindly watch part one and part two. So let's quickly discuss what we have achieved in part two. In part two, we have started doing a development for this architecture. We have created S3 bucket for source and for target. We have created one SNS topic and one SUS queue. This SQS queue has subscribed the SNS topic and we have also tested successfully if SNS is able to send message to SQS or not. So today what we are going to do is we are going to create a glue job first and Lambda we will work on it in the next video. In glue job what all processing we are going to do let's discuss it. So I have created one glue job in which we are going to import the libraries such as pandas date time and sys we will also import one function get resolved function we're going to use it this function is specific to glue which is used to retrieve the values of command line argument in our case we will pass two argument to this glue job one will be the bucket name another will be the file prefix if you want to know what is bucket name then this is the s3 path where we have a s3 bucket like this and after that whatever path you have we call it file prefix okay so in order to fetch the required argument, whatever argument we need, I'll keep it in an argument list. Then we will call our get resolved option function in which we will give two arguments. One will be sys.argv, it means all the arguments. Another will be the list of those arguments in which we are interested. So this function will return a dictionary in a form of our argument keys and their value. So now param is a dictionary and we can use it in order to fetch the required argument, which is bucket name and file prefix. Once we have these two arguments, we can create our source S3 file URL like this. Ultimately, the URL will look like this, which we have already discussed. If you want, you can print the bucket name, file prefix, and source S3 URL. Now we have S3 URL for source. Let's create the S3 URL for target. So in order to create a unique name every time, I'm going to take help of timestamp. In order to grab a timestamp, in order to grab a current timestamp, we will use date time function. And once we have it, we're going to convert that timestamp into an integer format using this function, strf time. Once we convert the current timestamp into integer, it will look like this. And after that, with the help of this, we are going to create our target as the URL. Here I'm hard coding the target bucket name. And after that, we will provide the subdirectories. In our case, the subdirectories are target and orders. Because the file which we are going to process is related to the order data set. That's why I'm keeping the directory name in orders. And the other purpose is when we will run a glue crawler on top of this path, then crawler will automatically create a glue table with the same name as of this directory. So you will get a table with the name of orders in Athena. So now we have target S3 URL as well. If you want, you can print it. Now we will start loading file and doing the processing. We will use pandas to load the file because this is our source file. We're going to use read CSV function. Once we have a data frame, we're going to drop our duplicate. Let me show you the source file which we're going to use. So we have already discussed that as part of a transformation, we are going to do a deduplication. Deduplication means we are going to delete the duplicate records. If you will closely look into this order file, you, you will see that we have the record from order ID 1 till 100. But I what I have done deliberately, I have deliberately copied the record from 91 to 100 twice. And we are going to delete the duplicate as part of our job. In order to delete the duplicate, we will use drop duplicate method. We will keep in place equal to true. That means that the duplicate will get dropped inside this data frame for permanently. Once we do that, we are also going to remove the index from our data frame. If you have worked in pandas, then you should be aware that pandas will provide an index to each and every value. We do not want that index to be saved in our target file. That's why we will remove those index. After that, we will use two parquet method to convert our file into parquet and we will save it. So that's it guys. This is the script we're going to use. Let's do one thing before creating a glue job. Let's upload a sample file in our source bucket. So our source bucket was GDP source. I'll click on it. I'll create one folder over here with the name as source files. So the folder got created. Now I'll go inside this folder and we will upload our file. In order to upload, you can click over here or over here. So I'm clicking in upload. It is asking you the path from where you want to copy the file. Let me click on add files. I want to upload this 
order one dot csv file let me click on open select it and click on upload so our sample file have got uploaded successfully let's quickly cross check we'll go to the bucket source wise folder and here we have our file okay now it's time to create a glue job so in order to open a glue console you need to search for glue you can open it in another tab when you will open it it will show you like this you need to click on these three lines and after that in left hand side you will see multiple options you need to click on etl jobs it will give you aws glue studio dashboard where you can create your jobs and you can also see the previous job which you have already created here it will give you a different option to create a job we're going to use python shell script we we are not going to create any PySpark or spark job and we are going to create a script from scratch we do not have any script already uploaded in any s3 path we will create it from scratch you need to click on this create button here you can provide your job name let me call it as edp hyphen glue now what we will do whatever script we have already discussed let me copy it and paste it in the glue console all right here we have forgot one thing everything is fine but our target bucket name is different so we need to provide our actual target name if you will go back we have already noted it down our target bucket name is edp target let me mention it over here now our script is fine then you need to click on job details here it has automatically created your job name right edp glue you need to create one im role in order to run your glue job so what we are doing as part of this video we are working on this step where we need to create a glue job and corresponding im role so we do not have any im role let me create one im role i'll open it you can click on roles click on create role come down you need to select the service for which you want to create a role select it create click on radio button click next now you need to attach the policy right so we will attach three policy over here one for s3 another for cloudwatch and then for glue you need to write it and then hit enter i'm providing amazon s3 full access but this is not advisable in production let's search for cloudwatch i'll provide cloudwatch full access now deselect that cloudwatch and again write glue enter and provide aws glue console full access come down click on next then click on create role we have not provided any role name we will call it as edp hyphen role click on create role okay it is creating our role it got created go back to your job refresh this drop down box and here you will be able to see your role we are creating a python cell job you need to select the version i'll keep it as python 3.9 it is asking you to load common analytics library. Yes, we need that because we want libraries such as pandas. DPU 1 by 16 DPUs are enough for this demo. Number of retry, we will not keep it as 1, 2, or 3. We will keep it as 0 because we do not want to run our glue job unintentionally every time when it is getting paid. Job timeout, in our case, 2 minutes is fine because our file is very small. You need to go to advanced property and what glue does is whatever script you have created over here it save that script in one s3 path location if i'll go to advanced property again it will also provide one script file name by default it has provided the same name which we have for glue job with extension as dot py it is going to save this script in this s3 path maximum concurrency we will keep it as one we do not want to run glue multiple times simultaneously so we will keep it as one after that, if you will come down, you will see job parameter. In our case, we will add two job parameters. Our parameter names will be bucket name and file prefix. You need to start your job parameter with two hyphen. Let me copy file prefix as well. Two hyphen and then file prefix. So in our case, we will hard code the job parameter. I will tell you why. So one will be our bucket name, which is EDP source. Another one will be our file prefix. In our case, this is the file prefix. If you are wondering from where I have got it, so as we have already uploaded one sample file in our source path. So from here, I have got it. You need to go into that path and click on copy as free URL. And this is the same path which I have already copy pasted over here. 
Okay, so now we have defined the job parameters. Let me tell you why we have hard coded them. Because I want to test this job, and every time when I will test this job, I do not want to separately pass this job parameter. Because I have hard coded them, I just need to click on run, and these job parameters will automatically be passed to our blue job. But remember, when we will run our pipeline, these job parameters will pass to blue job via Lambda. Lambda will calculate them at runtime and pass it to the blue job. So at that point of a time, this hard coded value will get automatically overridden. So you need not to worry about this hard coding. You can keep it as is. Everything is done. We can go ahead and save it. Okay, our job got successfully updated. Now, if you will go back to your blue job dashboard, you will be able to see your job over here, PDP blue. I'll go again inside it. And now you can run your job. Let's suppose you have not provided those parameters over here. We have not hard coded them. In that case, you would have to click on action and run with parameter, right? Here again, you will go to job parameter and again, you copy paste them every time. We do not want to do that. So because in our case, arguments are hard coded, we can directly go ahead and run our job. So it is saying your job got started successfully. Now you can go to the run step and here you can see your job run. In order to see the properties of your current job run, you can click on this radio button. It will come downside. Here you will see that it has provided one ID to your job run. Each and every glue job run will have a unique ID. The status is running. We are running glue version 3.0. If you will come down, you will see all the arguments which got passed to this job. In our case, we have hard coded bucket name, which is GDP source and file prefix, right? So what glue does is by default, it sends some other arguments also. We do not want it then, and that's why we have used get result options so that we can only filter out those arguments which are of our use. All right, so our job got succeeded within 15 seconds. Now it's time to validate source file and target file. So I will open target file in one tab. So you will see that earlier this target folder was not here. It got created programmatically via our glue job, and this is the parquet which got created just now 1206. This is 1207 now, okay. Let's first validate our source file. In order to check the content of a source file, you can click on it. Either you can download or open it, but I want to show you other way to check it. You can click on object action, click on query with S3 select, and it will provide you an interface similar to any SQL database, right? However, there are some limitations here. Only you can run select star or count star. You cannot do any further actions on top of it. But before that, you need to provide the input format and output format. In our case, the input format will definitely be CSV, which is automatically selected over here. Delimiter is comma. Then in output setting, if you want, you can see the output in JSON format, but for me, CSV is fine. Now, what you can do is you can run this command. And here we can see the sample file record. But in this case, I want to see what's the count star, how many records do we have? If you want to run count star, please remember to remove this limit clause. Otherwise, it will give you that much of a count which you have either in the file or either whatever you have mentioned over here. Let's say the count of a file is three. In that case, it will provide you correct count. But otherwise, it will provide you the count which is written over here. Right. So let me run it. So it has provided me five because we have mentioned limit five over here. If I will mention limit 50, it is going to give me the 50. But I know there are 111 records over here. So let me keep 150 and let's see what output it will give now. It is giving me 111. So that means whatever is the lesser count, it will provide you. If the count of a file is lesser, it will provide you that count. Otherwise, if the number which we have given in the limit is that is lesser, it will provide you that count. So better, you need to remove it and then run select count star. Now it will give you the exact count. So we have 111 records out of which one is header and 110 are actual records. Let me click on it. And here we can see the record from order ID 1 to 100. But as you remember, we have deliberately copy pasted 91 to 100 two times. So here we have duplicate. We need to check the same thing in target file. Have it got removed or not? Click on your target file. And again, you go back to object action, query with S3. Input setting will be Apache Parquet this time because our file format is Parquet. Output setting, I want to see it in CSV. Let's click on sample data so we can see the sample data is perfectly fine if you want you can also see it in formatted way but for me the raw is fine let's do one thing let's check the data itself so i'm expecting there should be 100 records from 1 till 100 
So here we can see that we have 100 records only. And the record from 91 to 100 got deduplicated, or I can say that they got deleted. If you still have confusion, you can go ahead and run count of star. I ran it, and here I can see that 100 records are there. So that's it for this video, guys. In this video, we have learned how to create a glue job, how to pass argument to that glue job, and how to test our job. Okay. In the next video, we are going to discuss how to create Lambda and how to test it. If you think this content was worth watching, kindly like and subscribe my channel. I will meet you in the next video. Till then, keep learning. Take care. Bye-bye.